Hello. It says now the I think it's the July sometime. She was born on the fifth of July. That was um and she was forty two weeks. Um and she's now three weeks old. So little Natalia and I'll just show her to you. Hold on. Natalia. If I can. I'll see if I can. Let's have a look. Whoa. It's a bit hard. She's in one of those ergo traveller thingies. Hello Natalia. Sleeping nicely. <laughs> Three weeks today. Mm. Alright. So. Alright, the labour was shocking. I reckon 100% it was worse than a normal natural labour. But who knows? I don't know. What happened was um, they did the Pitocin gel, which they used, they put the gel where the sun don't shine um, and they put it in to open the cervix once the cervix is open they um, break the waters and then they put the drip in and then they the oxytocin or whatever it is um, and that starts contractions or whatever and obviously that's, that's an induction so they, they, they induced me because um, nothing was happening it was 42 weeks so, Adam and I went to the hospital on the Monday morning, which was Monday the 4th. They put, um, long story short, they put two lots of gel in. I went into labour that day, about 2 o'clock. Um, had really random contractions and I was thinking, you know, at first they were alright, they were painful, but they were okay. You know, they, they were enough that you just had to like, it was like this, and I had to brace myself against Adam and they were really but that they were all right I was thinking are we gonna have this baby tonight so that was keeping me going um my mum was gonna be there so it was Adam and then when I Adam's my husband by the way obviously um when and when I go into labor I was gonna call my mum she was gonna come down and she was gonna be my other supports person Shh. so because my contractions were coming on so strongly they they decided to transfer me to the la labour ward and um, and I was all excited. I'm like, hey, we're going to go into labour. So then I called my mum. By the time my mum got there, she she was there probably 50 minutes later because it takes about 50 minutes to get from her house to the hospital. Um, I, I, don't even, I don't even really remember her coming in because by that stage, the contractions had come on so strongly and they were so erratic. I was in so much pain. And and I all I could do I couldn't screaming did nothing crying did nothing making moaning noises did nothing and all I could do was just like at first just focus on something and just and just try, like I was squeezing Adam's hands as hard as I could and I was just trying to get through these contractions and um and they came on they must have come on pretty quickly because within 50 minutes they'd gone from me sort of being aware of my surroundings to to not even being aware of what was going on and and well, I thought they were bad then and I was thinking you know this is this is pretty bad uh, but but that you know every time I thought it was bad like an hour later although I wasn't aware of time they they just got so much worse and then I think man it can't get any worse than this and as the night went on they got worse and worse so it got to the point where the contractions were coming on so quickly and so hard fast that I, I wasn't even getting a rest in between and um, eventually I couldn't even just I could, all I could do I couldn't even I had to have something to get me through so what I did was and this is what, what I found helped a lot but it was just it was pretty much unbearable pain it was just so bad um, all, what would I do is I'd, I'd sort of um, calculated that if I breathe slowly because they always say breathe slowly so I'd go uh, when when I felt a contraction coming coming on I would count I've worked out that it was eight slow breaths so I'd breathe out one two 
three and I just count my breaths and so because it goes up to eight when I got to breath two I think okay all right you're about a quarter of the way through it and it's gonna get a little bit worse then I breathe out and then breathe in and then I'd be at breath four and I would think okay you're halfway through and it would be just so intense but I think okay from now on it's gonna get a little bit easier so you would breathe five breaths and it would still be extremely painful but it's gonna get better so then six and then seven and then generally by eight it was bearable and then nine and ten and then it was almost gone and then um and in the in-between stages to me felt like bad period pain but it was very bearable um, but the thing is I'd get about it seemed like 10 seconds depending on which stage I was at at labor like how early it was in the night it got worse and closer together um, in between I'd get like 10 seconds break and then it would start all over again and by the end by uh, after hours of that you get pretty damn exhausted I had sweat long story short by the way sweat dripping down oh, I was lying in a pool of sweat pretty much I was hearing this woman next door screaming and I'm thinking man how can she find the strength to scream I was just you know in an absolute desperate situation and um, the thing is the doctors came in they they you know they try to examine your cervix which was just the worst thing ever because I could not hold still I had to be controlled I had to be in my position holding onto the fingers and stuff my husband's fingers and crushing him pretty much and whenever they tried to touch me I would just go into a frenzy of panic I couldn't cope it was horrible it was the worst thing I've ever experienced I'm not trying to scare anyone this is probably a really bad labor because we found out nothing was happening I wasn't dilating she wasn't moving it was just these erratic contractions this is a bad labor it must have been because there's no I couldn't I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. And um, it went on for a long period of time. Uh, the plan was, I reckon, if it was a natural labour, I could have gone through, I reckon I could have gone through it with pretty much maybe a bit of um, pethidine. Um, no epidural, that wasn't the plan. Um, they gave me the epidural pretty quickly and that sort of, it took the edge off it. It didn't, obviously didn't get rid of the pain, but it did help, it sort of made me tired. The gas, for me, did absolutely nothing. All, all I used it for was just something to hang on to, like this when the contractions were there. But the gas, as far as helping, coping or, or whatever, did absolutely nothing. just made me very, very groggy. Um, anyway, so the doctors came in, nothing was happening, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, what the hell is going to happen? I cannot... I was just at... At, in the worst position I've ever found myself in my life. I'm like, I can't go back, I can't get out of this labour, I can't go forward, nothing's going to happen. Am I going to have to stay here all night? They were talking about keeping me here all night until until, um, until they could induce me the next day because nothing was happening to my cervix, it wasn't dilating enough. And I was just out of, I was going out of my mind, it was crazy. Um... Anyway, I'll stop now and then I'll continue a little bit later. Keep this relatively sort of short.